Hello everyone, I'm Apoorva Pandita and welcome to Live Law. The Indian Union Muslim League told the Supreme Court on Monday that Bharatiya Janata Party should also be impleaded, that is made a respondent in this plea, which seeks to bar political parties with religious names and symbols, giving reason that Bharatiya Janata Party symbol Lotus is a religious symbol. A bench comprising Justice M. R. Shah and Justice C. T. Ravi Kumar were hearing the submissions and senior advocate Dushyan Dave, who was appearing for the Muslim League, had told this to the Supreme Court. To give a bit of the context, this petition that we're talking about was filed by former UP Shia Waqf Board Chairman Vaseem Ahmed Rizvi, who is now converted as Jitendra Narayan Singh Tyagi, alleging that no political party should be allowed to seek votes in the name of religion in a secular country and they should also not be allowed to use religious names and symbols while seeking votes. It was the contention of the petitioner that using religion in the election process either to seek votes from people or refrain them from voting any particular party is prohibited and a corrupt practice under section 123 sub clause 3 of the Representation of Peoples Act. The petition states and I quote, the people must vote on the basis of anything except religion. If a candidate is elected on the basis of religious symbol or name, then the whole process of enacting subclause 3 of section 123 of the Representation of Peoples Act would cease to exist. So in response to this plea, the Supreme Court on 5th September last year had agreed to hear this petition and had also sought response from the Election Commission of India and Centre for cancelling the name and symbol of such parties. Now what happened next? Since the Supreme Court had sought a response, the Election Commission of India on 25th November last year told the Supreme Court that there is no express provision under the Representation of Peoples Act 1951 which bars the registration of political parties having religious names or symbols. The Commission also emphasised that the names of the existing parties have become legacy names obviously because they have been in existence for decades, pointing that putting a bar on these parties may affect them substantially. So the question that we have is, is there any express provision under the Representation of Peoples Act which states that any party having religious names or symbols should be barred from being registered? For quick background, the registration of political parties is governed by Section 29A of the Representation of Peoples Act. And if we read Section 29A subclause 5 along with Section 29A subclause 7, it is clear that the political parties applying for registration with the Election Commission must be a true commitment to India's constitution as well as the principles of socialism, secularism and democracy and also uphold the sovereignty, unity and integrity of India. And therefore, any party which does not conform to these prerequisites shall not be registered. But the important thing that we need to know is that in 2005, the Election Commission had taken a policy decision that it shall not register political parties that had religious connotations under Section 29A. In this regard, the Commission had already made a submission that the parties which are mentioned in the petition were registered before this policy decision was taken. Since after this policy decision, no party having religious connotations was registered. Then the Supreme Court in January this year had observed that the petitioner must not be selective in his approach. The petition should be fair to everyone and secular in approach, meaning that the petition should not aim and target only political parties of a particular community. Now, following these major events, the next major development in this case had occurred today. So, what exactly happened in the Supreme Court today? The Supreme Court today had heard the submissions of Indian Union Muslim League, that is IUML, and All India Majlise Ittehadul Muslimin, that is AIMIM. Senior advocate KK Venugopal appearing for All India Majlise Ittehadul Muslimin, that is AIMIM questioned the maintainability of the petition, stating that no fundamental rights of the petitioner has been infringed and hence the petition under Article 32 was not maintainable. And as was observed before by the Supreme Court itself, the petitioner also did not implead all political parties with religious names. 
Instead, he has impleaded only two parties with Muslim names. It was also brought to the notice of the Supreme Court that a similar petition is pending before the Delhi High Court. While on the opposite hand, senior advocate Gaurav Bhatia, representing the petitioner, stated that the petition only seeks a direction that the provisions of Representation of People's Act and the judgment in Abhiram Singh v. C.D. Komachin be followed. Well, for now, the Supreme Court has adjourned the hearing by four weeks, asking the contesting respondents to produce the copy of the petition stated to be pending before the High Court in order to ascertain if the subject matter is the same. The bench also said that it will consider the preliminary objections as well. That was all for today's video. We hope that you like our content. And if you do, then don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. And for more legal updates, keep watching Live Law.